Today we are going to talk about Listeria monocytogens. Alright, so uh, starting with morphology. This bacteria is a gram-positive rod. Uh, it doesn't have the ability to form spores, so it's non-spore forming. It is motile, right? So in motility, you need to know two things. Outside the cells, for example, in culture, it is a tumbling motility, right? So it is a tumbling motility uh, when grown at 25 degrees Celsius. This is because of flagella. At this temperature, it can form 1 to 5 flagella. Right. Uh, inside the cells, the kind of motility is uh, like a rocket movement. Right. So it is a rocket movement inside the cells. Right. So these two kinds of motility will tell us that this bacteria has the ability to live both inside and outside the cells of the host. So we call this facultative intracellular organism. Right. This bacteria is also a facultative anaerobe and is catalyst positive. Now let's talk about the virulence factors. All right. So there are two main virulence factors. The first one is the flagella because I told you that it's motile. This means it is an H antigen. The second one is hemolysin, right? It's more like a streptolysin O. Uh, and it's firstly heat labile, meaning to say it's easily uh, distracted by heat. And it's antigenic, meaning to say it is the ability to stimulate the immune system to produce antibodies against this bacteria. Right, let's talk about toxins. But before that, you need to know that immune-competent hosts, uh, they are not uh, susceptible to listeria. Because the immune system can release factors that activate the macrophage so that these cells can now destroy this bacteria within them. Right, so this kind of immunity is known as cell mediated immunity. Right, now let's talk about the toxins. Right, so the first one you need to know is Listeriolysin O, Listeriolysin O, more like Streptolysin O, right? Okay, so this toxin allows the bacteria to escape phagolysosomes phago of macrophages and avoid intracellular killing. The second one is, uh, these are enzymes, right? Phospholipases. These are responsible for hemolysis, right? Beta hemolysis. All right. Okay. Now let's talk about our clinical features. Uh, as I mentioned previously, immune competent uh, individuals, they are not at risk. So to remember that listeriosis is bad, think of the following list. Pregnant women. Neonates, elderly, and immunocompromised uh, individuals, right? So uh, here I said meningitis in elderly because the main condition, the main clinical feature of our listeriosis is meningitis, right? So we're going to talk about uh, this group separately, right? So the first group is pregnant women. Infection usually occurs in the third trimester when the cell-mediated immunity decreases. Interestingly, in these individuals, meningitis is unusual, right? So they usually suffer from uh, septicemia, right? So uh, like in this case, bacteremia and sepsis, right? Uh, this bacteria infects the fetus and 22% of these infections can result in neonatal death. Surviving babies are often born prematurely with active infection. Because listeria is acquired from ingestion of contaminated foods like uh, infected coleslaw, milk, soft cheese, butter, and delimates, pregnant women are often told to avoid soft cheese and coldness. Right, because I said this bacteria thrives at low temperatures. Right, the second group is neonates. In neonates, infection is acquired in utero and can also be contracted from an asymptomatic mother with vaginal colonization with listeria during vaginal birth. This mode of infection results in neonatal meningitis presenting 
uh, about two weeks after birth. Two weeks after birth. Right. So I'm going to give you uh, uh, a clinical application of uh, bacterial meningitis or meningitis in general. Right. So uh, three bacteria are responsible for most meningitis acquired by the baby coming out of the birth canal within the first three months. Right. And this include Listeria monocytogens, E. coli, and group B streptococcus, right? So uh, we discussed uh, group B streptococcus. So you can click the link in the top right corner and watch that video, right? This is the first three months, right? And then two bacteria cause meningitis later in life after maternal antibodies Pass passively given to the fetus are uh, when and before the new antibodies develop, right? So uh, later in life, meningitis can be caused by Neisseria meningitidis and Haemophilus influenza. Uh, but remember that now there is a vaccine for H flu, right? Okay. The last group is uh, immunocompromised and elderly. Right. But firstly, you need to know that Listeria is the second most common cause of meningitis after pneumococcus, the streptococcus pneumonia. Right. So in elders, like people uh, older than 50 years of age, and is most common cause of meningitis in patients with lymphoma, uh, patients who are on corticosteroids, or those are receiving uh, organ transplant, right? So uh, remember this group, older than 50 years, and people who are who have lymphoma, who are on corticosteroids, and people receiving uh, organ transplant, right? Uh, and also, it causes meningitis in people with, with AIDS, to be more specific. Now let's talk about diagnosis of listeria. Right. So I said it causes meningitis, right? Meningitis is the more uh, is the common disease. Uh, so how do you diagnose it? We do lumbar puncture. If you remember, you take a uh, uh, cerebrospinal fluid uh, at L3 L4, that's the level of spinal cord. Uh, and we are taking the cerebrospinal fluid from the subarachnoid space, right? So cerebrospinal fluid analysis will reveal high number of neutrophils, a high level of protein, and low glucose. Uh, a gram stain of the cerebrospinal fluid will demonstrate gram-positive rods. Right. Because it can grow at low temperatures, it is often cultured at uh, 4 to 10 degrees Celsius. So uh, it's most common known as cold enrichment media to differentiate it from other bacteria, like to, iso to isolate from uh, mixed flora. Right. So one more time, we use gram staining and cold enrichment media. This one is culture, right? So to conclude this video, let's talk about treatment, right? So when meningitis developed in patients who are at risk of getting listeria, it is important to treat empirically with antibiotics that cover uh, like bacteria, you know, bacteria which are known to cause uh, meningitis, right? So empirical treatment, uh, we use vancomycin and ceftriaxone, right? So this is for gram positive and gram negative uh, respectively after lumbar puncture confirms that this is bacterial meningitis and particularly this is uh, listeria right we are talking about so we give either ampicillin right so this one we just add to the previous regimen we just add ampicillin or we can add trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole right okay Thank you so much. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. Until next time.